He's Chase Sr. I'm Harrison Graham here on Any Given Thursday. Make sure you subscribe to us here at Chat Sports and join us live on the channel every single Thursday. That way uh, you can get more college football videos. All right. The College Football Playoff Committee set to meet next Monday and Tuesday. They will release their first CFP rankings for this year on Tuesday, November 2nd. We'll likely be live on Chat Sports breaking that down. That is somewhat TBD with the NFL trade deadline also that day, but chances are we will be live. Um, let's look at the AP Top 25 chase, yep. and then we wanted to break down our projections of what we think the top 25 will look like from the committee because we know they're – they don't necessarily uh, model the uh, the AP poll. So here's where the AP top 25 is right now. Top five, Georgia, Cincinnati, Alabama, Oklahoma, Ohio State. Six through ten, you've got Michigan, Oregon, Michigan State. Michigan, Michigan State this weekend. We'll awesome talk about game. some of the big matchups coming up. Number nine, Iowa still floating around there. Number ten, Ole Miss. Uh, Notre Dame sitting at number 11. Number 12 is Kentucky. Wake Forest, they're kind of a wild card right now, Chase. They're unbeaten in the ACC, but – haven't really played anybody. Texas A&M, Oklahoma State rounding out the top 15. 16 through 20, Baylor, Pitt, Auburn, SMU. What Penn a fall for Penn State. Penn man. State, man, they were uh, – we were talking college football playoff a couple of weeks ago, and they're probably going to lose this week to Ohio State. And then 21 through 25, San Diego State, Iowa State, UTSA, shout out to the Roadrunners, Coastal Carolina, and then BYU sitting there at number 25. So – I think this is a pretty obvious question, but Alabama fans are prideful, so we'll ask it anyway. Who should be number Roll one? Roll Tide! It's clearly Georgia, right? It's clearly Georgia. It's not even close. Georgia's by far and away been the better team. Yes. So who should be number one? And The better question should be who should be number two, and we'll explore that later on in the show. But who should be number one? Shout out Georgia. Shout out other teams if you think they should be number one. But come on, it's the Bulldogs. Before we get to our projections, Chase – there's some big games this week, man. Michigan, Michigan State, uh, Georgia, Florida is always a big-time neutral site game. Texas Tech at Oklahoma, Ole Miss, Auburn, Penn State, Ohio State. A lot of playoff ramifications on the line this weekend. Massive. And you take a look at the landscape there. Michigan, Michigan State could have huge implications, not just in the Big Ten, but in the national title conversation and for those college football yep. playoff rankings. Georgia, would it be the craziest thing if they went down to Florida, even though Dan Mullen, his seat's a little bit warm right now? Texas Tech, Oklahoma, you expect Caleb Williams to continue to ball out, even though they got uh, in an in a interesting situation last week. First game without With Matt a Wells. bad Kansas team. How does Tech play without their head coach? I like what time? I've seen from Ole Miss. Shout out to Auburn for really kind of finding their groove over the last couple of weeks and finding a way to save their season and salvage it. And Penn State, Ohio State. Penn State, 18-and-a-half-point underdogs, they really need a win. They've lost back-to-back -to, -back to Iowa and Illinois. I don't Oof. think they're going to get it, but I think they can cover that 18-and-a-half-point number. We'll see what happens. These are some important games, especially Michigan-Michigan State. I think we're going to find out a lot about, those about both those teams. Are they real contenders? Yeah. Has the schedule just benefited both those teams? It's going to be a telling Neither week. has played a ranked opponent yet. Uh, uh, Michigan State technically played Miami when they were ranked, but Miami's falling off a cliff. So, uh, interesting games. We'll, uh, should be uh, uh, fun to uh, watch them this weekend. We'll get to our projections in just a second, but come on. If you want more college football coverage, all you got to do is subscribe. It's 100% free. Hit that big red button, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. Myself, Chase, Tom Downey. We'll break down some more college football videos for you guys. If you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. Okay, so we're going to go – Inverse order here, Chase, 25 to 21, and kind of break this down. These are our projections, and a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, the committee typically does not value group of five teams nearly as much as they should. That's number one, which is why I was hesitant to put UTSA in there, even though they're undefeated yeah. uh, at 25. Uh, and number two, there's always a SEC team with three-plus losses that gets in the first rankings. Uh, I could see Arkansas making it. They Easily. Have, they have a win over Texas A&M and Texas. A couple of good wins this yeah. year, yeah. NC State at 24, BYU at 23, Arkansas at 22. San Diego State at 21. We won't spend a lot of time at the back end here. We're just going to go through our uh, ranking projections as we go. Hey, our sportsbook partner, BetUS, the presenting sponsor for today's show. If you go to chatsports.com slash bet, enter the promo code CHAT125, you get a 125% deposit bonus. We just laid out the loaded slate for this week in college football. Maybe you want to lay some lettuce down on some of these marquee matchups. If you want to do that, 
you can do so. And you should do so with our sportsbook partner, BetUS. You lay down $100, you get an additional $125 back using that link in that promo code. Thank you, Producer Jack. Oh, you didn't even do the second part of the read. Come on. That's the because I was tossing it to you, but oh, I can handle it as you well. You can handle also, it. Also, if you want a free jersey, Producer Jack's just killing the game right now. Uh, we can get you hooked <laughs> up with a free jersey, whether that be a college football jersey, an NFL jersey. Here is how. So you go to chatsports.com slash bet, and you enter the promo code chat125. If you sign up and you put down $100 into your account, that's the minimum amount of money that you have to put in you get that 125 percent deposit bonus back place a bet on any game then you email us jersey at chatsports.com letting us know that you followed all of those steps and once you do that we will send you a free jersey of your choice it's a great deal bang bang it's a great deal it's a questionable sales pitch on our job but you know we're doing <laughs> we're doing what we can uh smu at number 20 I'm curious to see where the committee ranks the Mustangs this week for a couple reasons. One, they're undefeated. Two, Cincinnati, who we'll get to later on, they play SMU here in about three or four weeks, Chase. Yeah. That's their only marquee game left before the AAC title game. If you're Cincinnati, we know how the committee has treated G5 teams in the past. You need SMU to keep winning, and you need them to be ranked. So – that's that's a very important uh, point Honestly, there. Honestly, an American Athletic Conference championship game between those two teams. Houston's in the mix as well. Yeah, that'd be that'd be really interesting. Yeah, it could yeah. be a rematch. They could play each other twice. Iowa State at 19, Pitt at 18. They would love to have that Western Michigan game back where they somehow lost that Seriously. game. Kenny Pickett's Other, been balling. Otherwise, it could be Pitt, uh, Wake Forest in the a ACC title game. <laughs> what world do we live in? Unbelievable. Auburn at number 17, and then we have Baylor at number 16. Only one loss so far this year. Speaking of Wake Forest, I only have them at 15, Chase. I just I know this how this committee works. I, I've, I've studied it a lot. Yes, they're undefeated. Yes, they're a power five. A, no one cares about Wake Forest. The committee does not value non-Blue Bloods that much, and they don't have a signature win. They will not be ranked in the top ten. I can almost guarantee no, that. No, no, they're not going to be ranked in the top ten, I think. Fair or not. Solely because of the conference that they play in, in a bad and down ACC it's conference. It's not fair to them because they keep winning, yeah. but it's just it's the reality of it. Number 14, Oklahoma State, who has a loss, but they've played a much tougher schedule than Wake. Texas A&M at 13, two losses, but A, SEC, B, they beat – Alabama, so the, the committee's going to value that, I can promise you. Notre Dame at number 12, uh, their one loss to Cincinnati, who should be in the top five, then Kentucky at 11, their one loss to Georgia, and they were actually fairly competitive in that game, Chase. Yeah, no, they were. So it's really interesting how the 11 through 15 kind of shakes out. A lot of good teams here, but a lot of teams with uncertain futures yes. over the next couple of weeks, and it's all about to play out before our eyes. Before we get to the top 10, this is an interesting question. Does Wake Forest make the playoff if they're undefeated? It would be a new precedent to leave out a Power 5 unbeaten champion. So I actually think the committee would consider leaving them out. I, think I, don't, so think, too. I don't think that's fair because it's like, what else can we do if we win all our games and we're in a Power 5 conference? Right. But it wouldn't shock me with how bad the ACC is this year. What do you guys think? Type 1 for yes, type 2 for no. I think it would be criminal to leave them out, but – it wouldn't shock me either. I think they'll end up losing a game because their defense is so bad. But, uh, man, that's going to be fascinating over the next several weeks. Let's get into – oh, this is uh, – we'll, we'll get this updated in just a second here. What Do you do you think Wake gets left out if uh, they, if they I, went out? I, I do because I don't think the ACC has been good. And it's unfortunate because if Wake Forest goes on to have the best season in the history of the program, that's great news. And that's awesome. That's a great achievement. And if they win the ACC championship game – over a team like Pitt, you going to give them the benefit of the doubt? Well, and my, I don't think you can. Well, right? My thing, too, is if it comes down to Wake or Cincinnati unbeaten, Cincinnati has much better wins. Yes. On the road against Notre Dame at Indiana. I keep going back to this. Like, Cincy went toe-for-toe -toe with Georgia last year. So they're highly legit. All right. Had to fix a graphic on the fly. Let's get to 6 through 10 here. Uh, this is where it really gets interesting, Chase, because – and we'll get to the question of who should be number two momentarily because I think there's like seven schools in the hunt for it, which is very weird. Uh, by the way, this is a typo. Iowa State's not – this is Iowa at 10. So let's, let's fix that. It's Iowa at 10, not Iowa State. The Hawkeyes at 10. We already did Iowa State. Ole Miss at number nine. 
And then let's talk about this game for a second, Chase. The loser of Michigan, Michigan State. We kind of have to, have to guesstimate where they're going to fall. If, assuming if it's that, a close assuming game. Assuming that game's close, yeah. which neither offense is great, I think that's a low-scoring Big Ten I, I agree. classic. Uh, I think the loser's still in the top ten. Uh, we'll get to the where the winner would fall in our opinions. Oregon, Ohio State. What do you do there? Because Oregon beat Ohio State in Columbus, but they haven't been playing as well of late. They, have, they lost to Stanford. I think knowing this committee, they're going to rank Ohio State higher, but should they? Probably not. It's, Winning head to head should matter. What a wild path for Ohio State this year and for CJ Stroud. Yes. Ohio State to start the season was not a good team. CJ Stroud was struggling mightily, but they've been one of the hottest and best college football teams over the last month. And Oregon, on the other hand, since that win against Ohio State, they've been very shaky. They've been shaky. And it was a good win against UCLA, but they just haven't been the same team, and the consistency worries It's the battle of Oregon beat them head-to-head on the road and pretty easily, if we're being honest. Yes, they did. But if they played again, I think we would both pick Ohio State. And this is different than the Texas A&M argument from last year, when they're like, oh, you only had that one loss to Alabama. No, you Yeah, exactly. And also, uh, the reason it's tricky, too, though, is like, shouldn't that win matter, though? For Oregon, like it has to. they beat them on the road at like, their place. Come yeah. on, I, it's at tricky. So, who should be ranked higher? Type O R E for Oregon, type O S U for Ohio State. I selfishly both they hope they went out to see what this committee does. I really do. Uh, just recap six through ten. It's Iowa at ten. We've got that fixed. Sorry about that. Iowa State down, I believe, at nineteen. Uh, but that's uh, that's where we sit. Michigan State, Michigan loser at number eight. All right, so let's get to the top five. And I think really all the way down to seven, where Oregon is, they could all have somewhat of an argument for that number two spot. Georgia's clearly one. We don't need to spend much time there. If they beat Florida this week, Chase, they will be number one. Agreed? Yeah, yeah I agree. I no totally doubt about agree. it. So the question is, what do you do with the rest of this? I believe Cincinnati deserves to be number two because the win at Notre Dame is better than what any of these other teams have done. Yeah. Would I pick Cincinnati to be Alabama? No. But do they have a better resume? Yes. Yes. They're unbeaten. What's Alabama's marquee win? Is it uh, – have they played Arkansas yet? Oh, it's Ole Miss. Ole Miss. Which, that was a nice win, nice but it was win. at home. Yeah. I think at Notre Dame's a tougher – a better win. I agree. And they're unbeaten. Yes. And, and, and look, it's not just this year. This no. goes back to last year Cincinnati as well. Cincinnati has proven this over With about two and a half years now. Mm-hmm. With the same – coach and basically the same core players uh I've got the winner of Michigan Michigan State at three maybe you could argue them at two but outside of whoever wins that game of that win which would be a very impressive win neither of those teams have played a hard schedule no so are you in agreement with this I mean this is kind of how I Oklahoma has been close every week they're unbeaten so they should be ahead of Alabama I'm high I'm high on Cincinnati for a couple of reasons they've been on a torrid winning streak for the last two years, and they played really good football. They went toe-for-toe with Georgia last year, should have beat them in that bowl game. They have the better schedule and the better wins among all of these teams. We'll see what happens with Michigan, Michigan State. Obviously, how that game is played is going to be telling. Oklahoma, let's be real. With Caleb Williams, they're a different team, but they've been spotty this year. They should be penalized for playing close a lot, yes. in my opinion. And now, I they're agree. still in the top four. That's all where you need to be. And and Alabama, if they were to play Georgia right now, I, I can't come to the realization that Stetson Bennett might win a national championship game, but I think Georgia's the better team this year. And, and they have the better defense. And Alabama lost to Texas A&M. Yeah. So, I, I mean, this is how I would do it, depending on how these games play out this weekend. But it's going to be very interesting. I can't remember a time, Chase, where we've entered the first CFP rankings and – Sure, number one is very clear cut if Georgia wins this weekend. After that, though, who the hell knows? I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. They might put Alabama number two. This is a good question that we're going to pop up. It wouldn't up shot here. me at all. So, who should be number two? <laughs> yeah. We kind of just gave our reasons. I would put Cincinnati at number two. And let me tell you this, too, Chase. If you're the committee and you put Cincinnati at number two, surely there's no possible way you could leave them out if they go undefeated. No, you cannot you set cannot. that precedent of putting them at number two in the initial Again, rankings. Again, a two-year sample size here that yes. we're talking about. And they went out, and you dropped them all the way to five or lower. There's no way you can do it, which probably means they won't put them at two this week to, to, to protect themselves from that possibility. But we'll let you guys debate who should be number two in the first rankings.